here now the opportunities to grow and serve. The prayer focus for this week is the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 32. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Our prayer concerns and sick and shut in. Please continue to pray for those who are on our list um, from our church, our community, and all who need prayer. And if you believe the name needs to be either removed from the list or added, please let the church secretary's office know. And um, on an aside, please keep the Northweather family in your prayers as they lost their patriarch, Mr. Northweather Senior. So please keep them in your prayers. The altar flowers, if you'd like to donate flowers for the altar, please sign up in the Narthex. Remember, flower deliveries must be made on Fridays between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. The beautiful flowers that adorn the altar are from Sister Dana McClure to celebrate her October 3rd birthday. Amen. United Women in Faith, join us for a book discussion Friday, October 20th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. The book they're reading is Black What's the Ink by Michelle Coles. All are welcome. Also for United Women in Faith, their coming Sunday is October 22nd, where our very own, our first lady, Ms. LaShonda Mitchell, sister LaShonda And our theme is Women on Fire. Hey. The upcoming 32nd Lady Awards Lunch is going to be on October 28th, Saturday. Our 2023 honorees are Sister Marilyn Pat Gross yeah. and Brother You can find the ticket form and money to do today, so please, the order forms are on the table in the narthex. The cost is $65. The lunch will be held at DA's Banquet and Events in River Oaks, um, on River Oaks Drive, 159th Street, east of Torrance and Cal City. So please turn in your form and monies and help support our very own Maple Park. Amen. New members class, new members begin the first Thursday in November at 6 p.m. More info to come. Our men's Bible study, Men Save the Day. Men Save the Day. That goes for me too. <laughs> men's Bible study begins the first Thursday in November at 7 p.m. Please come and study the word with Pastor Mike. A few more. Church conference, mark your calendar. Church conference is scheduled for Sunday, November 19th, where Staff Parish Relations Committee will meet at 2 p.m. Congregants will be welcome at 2.30 in the fellowship hall downstairs. Email all your reports to MaplePartUMC at Yahoo.com no later than Friday, October 20th. Again, we need teachers for children's church. Ages are from 4 to 17 for our children, where sisters Ethel Streeter and Sister Damon McClure will uh, take any info that you have for any people who would like to volunteer for that. And lastly, we want to congratulate our very own Minister Captain Rock, who participated in the Chicago Marathon. <laughs> Congratulations. Our October birthdays for this week, we have Sister Leora Holt on October 17th. <laughs> Sister Crystal Washington on October 18th. And our very own Reverend Margaret Ann Williams, better known as Reverend Paul. And now we reach the point in our service where we want to welcome any visitors who came in the park today. If you would, please give us your name, stand, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Any visitors today? Well, like you said, we want to have a family, so thanks be to God. And now we will have our first lady's corner with first lady Mitch Mitchell. Yeah. Right. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. How are you? God bless you all. I am so excited about next week. I don't know about you, but I am truly excited about women on fire. Folks, call up your friends, call up your sisters, your aunts, your cousins. 
So Lady, as I am preparing, as I know you are, I ask that you would just continue to pray for me throughout this week, to fast with me, if you will. I will be fasting this week on Tuesday. So if you want to join me on a fast, whatever that is, if you want to give up something, maybe the TV, maybe your favorite show, you, you may be on medication and you can't give up food, or you know, maybe that call that maybe you should be having, you'll say, you know what, today no social media, no phone call. Fast with me, pray with me on this week that we may come together on next week. And oh my, oh my, what a time it will be. Amen. 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 God bless you all. May all who are able please rise for the call to worship. We are called to hold tight to words that bring life. We know God is speaking good news through scripture, song, and labor. Oh, no, and news to us. We listen for grace at work in everything, for good, for life. We know God's words serve God's purpose. In all we say and do, we are learning what it means to be faithful as those called to serve and witness in deeds and words that heal and free. We thank God for the good news of Jesus of love and the end of words of life. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for our congregational song. My hope is built on nothingness. Jesus' love and and 
service, celebration, and discipleship. All Christians are called to Christ's servanthood in the world, to the glory of God and for human fulfillment. The church, as the community of the new covenant, participates in Christ's ministry of grace. It stretches out to human needs, where the servants take the way of God's love and God's. In our ministry of servanthood is this ultimate concern. That all may be renewed in the image of their creator, and that all Christians are called to minister in the deeds and words that heal and free. Amen. Thank you. It is now prayer time in the house of the Lord. But prior to pray, I just have a short testimony that I would like to give. Third Wednesday evening. Oh, you all know this. <laughs> On Wednesday evening, I woke up in the middle of the night. It was actually Thursday morning with chest pain. And I know a lot of you know I have a stint. So I always am concerned about blockages. Went on all night long. And so I got up the next morning, and as I was getting up to get prepared to go to the hospital, because I knew that's where I needed to go, I got a call from my son's home telling me that he had just been sent to the hospital in an ambulance. So as a mother, what do you do? Well, you put your mask on first. That's what you do. Yes. You, you told her you can't go no So I did. I went to the emergency room. I did a lot of things I shouldn't have done, and the doctors called me because I took my puppy and took my puppy somewhere where she would be safe because usually they keep me and I don't want her in the house by herself. And then I went to the hospital. I took myself to the hospital. And I know the magic words when you walk in and I said the magic words. I have chest pains. Immediately they took care of me. Well, long story short, they kept me all day. They ran all kind of time. Praise God, they said I was okay. Yeah. They made a promise. They said, we're going to let you go home, but you have to promise that you will be on bed rest. And I said, okay, I'll be on bed rest, but I'm going to church on Sunday. Amen. Amen. At the time, the reason we'll go to church, but then you go home and you get back on bed rest. And I said, I put my son is doing fine. Amen. They ran tests. He's back home. With all that, it was so overwhelming, but when you have God, and you know he's shoring you up. Yes. And you trust and you believe. Yes. All things are possible yes. through Christ. And I went to see him the next day. He was glad to see me. I didn't tell him anything about I had been in the hospital. But I did come to see him the next day. Amen. So would you all please join me at the altar as we do the altar call. Please look at the sick and shut-in list so that we can pray for those on the sick and shut-in list. Pray for those that are on the prayer list. And let's do a like prayer for the Lord's Brothers family who has lost the patriarch of their family, Bill North Weather Sr.
and I know you know that they're saved. Touch them. Because serving you, Father God, taking care of each other requires energy, commitment, and time. Father God, we thank you for having given us that for 60 years. And now as we go through our 61st year and the years to come, we ask that you just continue to just hold us up and support us so that we can be a blessing to this community called Maple Park, Morgan Park, and beyond. Now, Father God, we come to you again just saying bless this world. Bless our ministries. Bless our pastor and our first lady. Father God, bless our choir who minister to, ministers to us and makes such a commitment to ministering to us. Father God, we thank you for hearing these prayers that are coming from us. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. And we leave uplifted because we know that when prayers go up, blessings come down. Oh, Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you. And all of these blessings and prayers we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, the Christ. Amen.
I was raised. In the gospel, especially the Old Testament, I was taught to fear God. And fear as in fear, not as in revere. And it was hard for me. But even when I think about that, I think about how God saved me for a time when he introduced himself to me. And I would know him for myself. And I have been on fire. And there are people that are here today, I'm not going to call them out, that came to hear word. They know that that's my message always, is Jesus. For Jesus. But for Jesus. I would not be here. And to speak about the marathon last week, I have, I did not run the race. I run it six times, and I thought that was enough. But then I was asked in the running group, if I would be a pacer. And so I ran eight miles as a pacer, keeping them at the 1045, and then the next pacer would pick up and keep them at 10 minutes 45. And then the last one only had to do seven miles. And I wonder why I didn't do the last one. That's, that's a whole other thing. But the thing that I liked about it was I got to see the race from the other side. And I just, I think I told Brother Sherman this, I just hope my face didn't look as bad as some of those people that were coming up. Because it's tiring, and you won't understand this, but after about the 14th mile, you don't all fight it. You just don't. You just don't. If you train, you just don't. So, a little bit of background about me. What I like to do in a sermon is I like to understand what the word is telling me. Because another thing that happened to me is I used to sit in the pews in other churches and they say, you know the story. Well, guess what? I didn't. I didn't know the story. So I needed to understand the story. Don't skip and tell me. And so I had to make it through that. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background. We're going to have some questions, and we're going to have a response. Because remember, this is a three-part homily. And what that means is one plus one plus one equals sermon. Just like one plus one plus one equals three. Got it? So between all three of us, you will get a word. Let us pray. I thank you, Lord, for being with me through my hour of preparation. Lord God, I pray and I'm seeking your strength in this time of proclamation. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, I pray. Amen. Today's scripture verse is coming from 2 Timothy 1.3. So I'm sorry that you got to hear it from me again. We just heard it there. But the scripture is, what you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Now the message Bible says a little bit different. So keep at your work this faith and love in Christ exactly as I have set it out for you. It is as sound as the day you first heard it. Guard this precious thing. Place your custody by the Holy Spirit who works in us. So let's dig a little deeper because we were given one verse. But something comes before you and something comes after you. So let's kind of read from verse 1 to verse 13. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of love that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
appeal for loyalty to Paul and the gospel. For this reason, I remind you to fan the flame of the gift of God which is in you through the laying of my hands. For the spirit that God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our love or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to his holy life, not because of anything that we've done, but because of his purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. And of this gospel, I am appointed and herald and as apostle and teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet, there is no cause for shame because I know who I am and what I believe and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the day. 13. I'm going to say it so many times y'all don't know this scripture. <laughs> what you heard from me, keep this pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. There are three short books. First and second Timothy and Titus. They are called pastoral letters. <coughs> they are more like manuals for Christian conduct, administration, than they are of personal letters. Now anybody that knows Paul knows that he was all about guiding people to Jesus. So you want to know who is Paul and why was he writing to Timothy? But guess what? He was not only writing to Timothy, he was also writing to us. You could say Paul was Timothy's pastor. We got a nice looking pastor here. <laughs> keep, keep that up. Paul urged Timothy to teach with diligence. Hope firmly to the true words that he taught them. Our pastor teaches us every week. Through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives in him, he gives the word to us. Keeping the good things that have been trusted in him for us. So who was Paul? He was an outstanding missionary, a theologian, a writer of the early church. Paul is an important figure in the New Testament. Not today, not tomorrow, but when you get time, just read Romans. Just read Romans. He wrote 13 letters that compromised the most important theologian, theological interpretation of the teaching of Christ and the significance of his life, death, and resurrection. Timothy was probably his last letter. Paul, also known as Saul, was on his way to Damascus to arrest and imprison the believers. Go figure. The resurrected and glorified Christ appeared to him in such radiance, his mind. And he said, Paul. No, I'm sorry. He said, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Yeah. And Saul looked into all that brilliance and he was immediately surrendered to Christ's authority and went into the city and waited for further notice, for further direction. Tell me what to do. And when he got there, his blindness was healed. The scales, not the scales, but his blindness was healed. And he received the Holy Spirit and he was baptized. Yeah. So let's fast forward to Timothy. Why is Paul talking to Timothy? 
Timothy was a child. His mother Eunice and his grandmother Lois taught him the scriptures. He was converted on Paul's first missionary journey. Paul referred to Timothy as his child in faith. Timothy further became a disciple who was well respected by the believers. Timothy accompanied Paul on mostly all of his missionary journeys since they became acquainted. He was, trust, he was a trustworthy friend who cared for Paul's needs and represented him when Paul was in prison. He was sent by Paul to help the church establish order and resist false teachings and he had the authority to teach and preach. Paul called Timothy, my true son in faith. To Paul and Timothy's teaching was more than head knowledge. Teaching means making disciples, training people in the Christ walk, biblical knowledge, and the understanding of the scripture and the meaning is essential. So don't let someone tell you you know the story and you just nod because you're embarrassed because you don't know the story. Timothy was in the time of transition. He had been Paul's right young helper. Soon he would be his own leader of the church in a difficult environment, although his responsibilities were changing. Timothy was not without help. He had everything he needed to face the future. If he would hold on tightly to look to God's resources, not Paul's resources, God's resources. Because at that time, he understood yeah. that it was really God that was leading him. Yes, yes. Timothy went on to become a bishop in Ephesus. <laughs> when a pastor is called. One of the first things they do is study. They study, they go before God, and they say, why'd you pick me? Why do I have to do this? God is saying, no, this is what you're going to do. And I'm going to tell you something. In the United Methodist Church, that's a long road to take. I sit on the board of ordained ministry. That's a long road to take. And sometimes you want to just say, what? Mm -hmm. I am, you have, you have. <laughs> but he calls him approved. And he is now pastor to lead us. Amen. And bless you. I'm not going to take him out. But I'm just saying, it's a hard road. While it's true that everyone should be a teacher, it's also true that the need of teachers is overwhelming. We heard the announcement, Brother Brown, Jonathan told us that they need teachers for children's church. Amen. Train up the child in the way that they should go. Amen. Now, if we can't help with that, then we, can't, we cannot complain about the way the child went. Hello, somebody. Just as Moses needed help in the supervising the Hebrews in the desert, so pastors and priests in a crowded world could not carry on the teaching ministry without the help from the dis disciplined, trained teachers. <laughs> Listen to what Paul said to Timothy. Take my teachings that you heard me proclaim in the presence of many witnesses and trust them to reliable people. Not to just anyone, to reliable people who will be able to then do what? Teach others. When you're facing difficult transitions, it is good to follow Paul's advice to Timothy and look back at your experience. Who is the foundation of your faith? Remember I said I'm going to ask some questions. I have my grandmother. I have my mother. Even though we were of different beliefs, my core training was 
was in my home. And as I said before, I could still see how God was saving pieces of that for me to use later. And later, we're going to jump all the way to when I came to Mitchell Park. I had so many teachers, and I can't name them all, but I want to name a few. I had Miss Bobby Henry, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Todd, Miss Evans, Reverend Ma, Miss Jester, and not to mention the many pastors that I set at their feet. I can't tell, I cannot mention you all. But as I look at you, I can see how you have helped me in bringing me to Christ. Because believe it or not, not all the way there yet. I have days that I kind of stepped back yesterday. I had some moments. But I always remember who I am and who's What gifts have the Holy Spirit given you to do? We have annual conference coming up. No, church conference coming up. We have a lot of positions in this church that we need help. Amen. Big or small. Because when I first started, I said I'm not taking no road, but I would just help. I'll help on this committee because we're getting this, this task done. Think about that. Just get that task done. Then build up to another task. That would be that was a commercial just now. <laughs> What's important is that you use the gifts that you've been given. Yes. Paul was given a gift when once he was saved by Christ. And I'm going to say the risen Christ. Then, then Paul took what he had and passed it on to Timothy. Now we heard that Paul was a pastor. He had a pastor's heart. We got a pastor. We be, we got a pastor's heart. When we're called to do things, let's just try to be obedient. Because you know it's not coming directly from the pastor is coming from the vision mm -hmm. that the Lord has gave to him for us. <clears throat> Amen. By our union with Christ through faith, we participate spiritually in Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension. Consequently, we have been liberated from the power of sin, death, and the law. We should do good to everyone, especially for those who belong to the family of faith. Maple Park, I urge you, if you can't get anything from this, take my story. Some people have worked here when I arrived at Maple Park, and they knew who I was then, and how God has transformed me now. You ain't got to be worried about that. I was pissed off. <laughs> but you know what I took from that? You loved me through it. Amen. And God will love you through it. Amen. To get you there. Because I'm like Saul. Not Paul. Saul. <laughs> Who had to be saved. what they do. 
doing, their actions, and the way they are. It just encouraged me so much. So I want to thank you. Good. As we heard, the scripture is coming from 2 Timothy, where it says, What you heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teachings. As Kathy, you know, we're so in sync. I also looked up the message version, too. Because I like to try to understand what I'm, you know, what I gotta talk about. <laughs> and when it says, So keep at your work with this faith and love. And the part that stuck to me was rooted, rooted in Christ. Mm -hmm. Those are words that stuck at me. But first, I had to find out who the heck is Timothy. I'm gonna tell you. I didn't know, you know, you hear about him, who is it? I knew mean, I found that he was an active, faithful member of the missionary, or oh, I'll say, player teaching, you know, <laughs> with Paul and Silas, and teaching Jesus followers and others about the good news. Well suited for serving as a witness to God's kingdom. But Paul, who wrote the letter to Timothy, stuck to me, struck out to me the most. Because mind you, Paul was locked up in jail, doing time, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> in this particular time, Paul wasn't sure if he was going to get out of this this time. He was going to make it. Mm -hmm. Or if this was his last letter, as Kathy wrote. I said, so I said, wow, Paul, you had time to write a letter to Timothy and miss all of this. <laughs> you know, you got a lot going on to take out the time to say, hey, you know what, I'm just going to keep it real, it's true for me. But, let me just be honest with you all for a minute. I actually just came up with these words that I had to speak to on you guys today. This one is 6.50 a.m. I kept asking, no, I was telling God, I just don't have the time mentally, physically, or spiritually to give anyone a positive word. My job had been overwhelming, my manager on my back. You know how that goes. Yeah. I work for my daughter's dad school through the week and the evenings, and that's very demanding. And when you work for your kid, I tell them, you know, all the people on the back. You know? And then I work for the church. <laughs> you know, we can worship children, lay, you know, whatever else I run around to do. Church folks can be more demanding than the corporate world. Yeah. And I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Right. So, but most took it all was last Sunday. I had to put down my 11 year old granddaughter and watching my daughter's sadness and pain and watching this sweet dog become ill, blind, and then lay down and close her eyes and take her last breath. That, that was the final work in me. And in the midst of that, I'm turning 60. <laughs> so in all this, I'm going to a new season with all this chaos, sadness, and grief. And I was like, God, I am too broken to give a word today. So it was my goal. You know how you do them goals for the week? My goal this week every day was I called Pastor Mike. And I told him, I can't do this. I was so sorry. And I was going to move forward. But every day I tried to do this, my day got crazier and crazier. And when I remembered to call Pastor Mike, it was too late. I was in bed. So every day this goal was on here and it was never, ever checked out. So now I'm just sad. I still ain't got nothing to say. I'm still looking at this scripture. You know, sound teachings. Yeah, 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 God, I hear you, I hear you. So I'm with my daughter and I said, you know, I don't know if I can do this later this time. So she looked at me and said, okay, my wife's church. So I'm trying to be all proper, you know, thinking I can shoot something to her that, you know, she'll say, yeah, that's kind of hard. So I say, hey, keep the sound teachers with faith. <laughs> so she looked at me and said, huh, and walked away laughing. And then she says, you already sent your message, Mom. <laughs> of course, you know, I looked at her like she was crazy. <laughs> so we began watching a musical called Rise. Rise of the Pink Ladies. Kind of ironic, huh? So this morning I got up and I said, Whoop, God, my daughter was my home. And she gave me a message. She wrote that letter for me. It wasn't a letter, it was her word to say, You got this. And I became Timothy. 
So church, I think, quotation Timothy, is here to let Maple Park Church know what, what you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teachings with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Rise up, Maple Park, and keep at your work here in the heart of Maple Park on the corner of 170. You have 60 years of faith and love rooted in Christ. It is sound as the day you first planted your seed here on this earth. Don't stop reaching out and teaching the community why Maple Park is here to serve, reach, and uplift to all who are in need, empty or lost. Yeah, yeah. Maple Park, no matter what we go through as a church family, remember to rise up, mm -hmm. rise up, yeah. and remain committed to Jesus' yeah. love yes, yes, and yes, yes. Amen. That's Amen. all I got Timothy to travel with him 
on his journey so that he can help Timothy grow in his faith. By equipping him for the task of ministry, empowering him for success, and employing him for the effectiveness at the Church of Ephesus, and by communicating his love, respect, and appreciation for Timothy as a son, brother, and messenger of Christ. In Paul's second letter to Timothy, Paul warned Timothy about the false teachers that he would encounter and tell him to come in things that he has learned because he knows the character of those he learned from, namely Paul, himself and his mother and grandmother. The truth Timothy was taught was from infancy. Truth about sin and our need for a savior. Mm -hmm. We're able to make him wise for salvation. For salvation of truth, this advice is crucial to all Christians. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped by every good work. Yeah. Paul counseled Timothy, his dear son, from a heart of love, wanting Timothy to stand firm in his own faith and to lead the other believers. Paul is saying to Timothy, when I'm gone, I need you to continue. The roles are reversed. You are the teacher now. You need to step up your game. Remember your training, your teaching. Remember to step up. Remember. Tell him to remember. And he's a sound teacher because Paul told him his training. Yeah, yeah. So Timothy's timid, he's scared, but he's telling you that to dig deep. deep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do your studies. Mm -hmm. Remember the book of Genesis. God was there at the beginning. Come on, come on. Go to Exodus. Yeah. Remember what God has done. He equipped Moses. Mm -hmm. Remember your teaching about Ruth yeah. and Esther. Wall here, so when church is over, you want to look down and see the pastors and 
that whose ball came from this church and talk. They're on that wall. Mm -hmm. on the, I guess that would be the South. 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 Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I am so glad for the Pauls of this church who were to hear were here to help the Timothys like me. Mm -hmm. When I arrived at this church, being in the Bible studies with Mr. Henry, talking with Mr. Wilson, Mr. Norrisman, Mr. Evans, Mr. Long, Mr. Hope. Then my Pauls became Paulines. <laughs> Thank you to Reverend Lambert. I joined the church under her pastoral care. To Mrs. Henry, Mrs. Evans, Mrs. Todd, yes. Mrs. Clark, yes. Reverend Hamper, yes. Mrs. Norrisman, yes. Deacon Charmaine Coffin, yes. who trusted me to help her with vacation Bible school, yes. Mrs. Norrisman, who instructed you on how to read the scriptures, yes. and to Reverend Mom. And to the quiet, but with a lot of courage and very strong in their beliefs, Miss Nellie Walker yes. and Mrs. May Chester. Yes. There are many more in this church. Oh, and I can't forget Minister Kim and Minister Kathy Brock. Church, who are your moms? Maple Park, I charge you. We have to be ready for the Timothys who are here. Mm -hmm. We just had a reception for the new believers. Absolutely. And for the Timothy who are coming, yes. we have to be ready. Yes. And we saw a lot of potential candidates at the food pantry open. Yes, we did. Yes. We need to rise up. Yes. Why? Because we are in a spiritual warfare. <laughs> Every day on the news, terrible things are happening. Yes. Everywhere we are, hearing about more killings, natural disasters, terrorism, and the bombing of Israel. Put on the armor of God that Paul talks about in Ephesians 6. Mm -hmm. Verse 10 through 18, he says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Yeah, yeah. I said schemes. Because yeah. the devil is trying to trick you up and throw yeah. you off your game. Yeah. I know, because it was done to me. Yes. When I lost my firstborn, Christopher. Yes. yes. This church is awesome. And my women's Bible study group, the Pauls and the Paulines, they reached out to me in scripture and prayer, yes. reminding me to hold on to my faith. Because yes. God doesn't make mistakes. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Maurice. Miss Mary Davis, you helped me through my grieving because you also lost your firstborn. For our struggle, then Paul tells us in verse 12, for our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly realms. <clears throat> Therefore, put on the full armor of God, yes. so that when the day that the evil, that the evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. Right. And after you have done everything, stand. around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness yes. and with your feet 
with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Yes. Yes. Now we are suited up. Yeah. Our heart is covered. Yes. But wait, he tells us more in verse 16. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith yeah. with, with, with which you can extinguish yeah. the flame yeah. arrows of the evil one. Oh. The sword, which is God's word, and pray in the spirit of all patience. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on prayer for all the Lord's people. Yes. Amen.
struggling with things in your life and you know you feel this full of God in your life. That's the community grace of God tugging and pulling that has kept you all this time. It is now time that you come to a place of surrender. All that it is is to say, Lord, you know, I'm a sinner. Lord, forgive me for I am a sinner. The second thing I always say is there, there is a place that comes a time in your heart where you invite Christ in your heart. Lord, come in my heart. The third thing is out of your, out of your mouth. Speak and profess. Lord, I want to make you my Lord and Savior. Yes. One, asking for forgiveness of your sins. Two, invite Christ in your heart. Three, out of your lips and from your lips, say, Lord, I want to make you my Lord and Savior. That that is saying and that like a commitment I'm on to him because he already knows. But to yourself that I'm giving it all up. And I'm turning it all over to you. I believe at this moment that you're saying right now, wherever you are, whether you're kneeling, whether you're, you're watching, whether you're standing, whether you're here, if you're not giving your life to Christ yet. I believe right now that you're a saint. Now just what you've been hearing on today. These words of excellence, of words of understanding, the, the word of scripture that goes forth, that being able to interpret the word by your experience and your tradition and understanding. Get yourself into the Red Bible based church. The doors are always open here at Maple Park. But we would love to be your church home, and I would love to be your pastor. Come on over. The doors of the church are open. Is there one here today? Is there one here today that you have been just, just really struggling, but now you're at a place that you know today is the day. Today, right this moment, is the moment. I ask you now to come. If you're not physically in this place, you know how to reach us. You know where to come. If you want to be here at Maple Park, Amen. I would love to be your pastor. And they will part would love to be your church. Amen. Is there one today? Because this is, I want to do a second call if you don't mind. It's one. A rising up. Taking your rightful place and your rightful authority of what you've been given when you accepted your call many years ago or even as, as soon as last week. Right now to rededicate yourself to the authority that was given to you by the blood that was shed on Calvary Cross. If you know that in yourself that you have not rooted yourself, that you have not put up the bootstraps, that you have not committed yourself to ministry right now, I want you to just wear
restore. I want you to empower like never before. Right now in this place, in Jesus' name, let the church shout amen. 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 amen again. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Before we go to our offering, and I know it's time to do all. Come on, come on. I'm not going to I have to say this. There you go. I have to say this. <laughs> if you were not here on yesterday, you missed the work of the Lord. Yeah. 
this one? Amen. Come on, boy. Shame 
get up and go. And we complain and lag and, you know, all such things as that. But I am so grateful. Then Tuesday, I was on my way to choir rehearsal. And a car hit me on the expressway and spun me around so that I was facing north instead of facing south like I was supposed to. And these teenagers that were always so busy condemning pulled up behind me, jumped out of their cars, and flagged the cars so that no one else would hit me. <laughs> and I just wanted to talk about how grateful I am. Yes. So
true, I bless them.